Hi, and welcome to another AppleChamp tutorial. In today's tutorial, we'll be giving you an intro to Mac OS X. We'll start by covering the basic setup, and then we'll discuss what OS X is, and then I'll cover the user interface, and then I'll cover Finder, and then we'll move on to Applications, and then I'll cover System Preferences, and then lastly I'll move on to some tips and tricks. So the first screen that you get when you open your new Mac, or after formatting and installing OS X Lion, is this welcome screen. And basically all we need to do is just select the country that we're in. If your country is not listed, then you can always just click show all, and then you can browse down to the country that you're in. So I'm just going to select United States and then click continue. And then you want to select your keyboard language, and again, if yours isn't listed, you can always just click show all and then select yours. So I'll go US again. And then we have the option to transfer information to this new Mac from another computer. I generally don't do this because I prefer to transfer it myself manually once the setup is done. But if you know what you're doing and you feel like restoring from a time machine backup or from a Windows PC, you can just follow those prompts and it'll direct you through it step by step. But I'm going to select don't transfer now because I want my Mac to be completely clean install and then I will add my files later. So I'll select continue. Now it gives you the option to enter your Apple ID if you want to be signed into the Apple Store as soon as you log in. I'm not going to fill this in. You don't have to fill this in. As, you, as it says, if you don't have an Apple ID, just click continue. So you can choose whether or not you want to fill it in now. I'll just select continue. And now we're just going to fill in our registration information. So you can fill in your first name, address, city, and this is all just your registration information for your Mac license. This also gets added to your address book automatically so that when you're browsing websites and you have to fill in personal information for web forms, it can do it for you automatically. So it does come in quite handy. So go ahead and fill it in. And once you're done, you can click continue. So I'll just go continue. And now we get to choose our computer account. So you can type in your full name. In this case, I'll just say Apple Champ. And then it'll automatically generate an account name for you. I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so I'm just going to make the, the A a capital letter. And as it says, this will be used as the name for your home folder and it cannot be changed. So you better choose what you want now because once you've set up your account, this name is fixed and you cannot change it. And then you can put in a password. And again, in this case, you don't have to put in a password. If you want it to be completely open and not secure, you can just leave a password out. So I'll just leave it for now. Click continue. Okay, continue. Now it's creating the account. Just give it a few moments and then you get the option of choosing an image for your account. So in this case, I'll select a soccer ball. I'll go continue. And then you can choose your time zone. So I'll just leave it as the default. Click continue. And that's basically it. That's your primary setup and it'll take you through to your, your desktop so you can begin using your Mac. So I'm just going to click Start using Line. You should now be looking at your new desktop of OS X. Now that we've gone through the basic setup of your Mac, let's begin by discussing what OS X is. An operating system, or OS, is defined by Wikipedia as a set of programs that manages computer hardware resources and provides common services for application software. The operating system is the most important type of system software in a computer system. Without an operating system, a user cannot run an application program on their computer. So OS X is the operating system used to essentially run your Mac. In this tutorial, I am currently running OS X Lion. It is what links all your hardware together and tells it how to operate. It is also the backbone on which all your other applications run. Because Apple create both the hardware and the software together, 
you are getting a fully integrated system where everything works together perfectly. With other operating systems, the OS is designed by one company and the hardware running it is designed by others. That's why you need to get a bunch of different drivers and often those drivers don't run well with the OS and that often causes program freezes or crashes. This is one of the big reasons why OS X is so stable and enjoyable to work with. It just works. OS X is not prone to viruses as other operating systems are. There are also many security features within OS X that work in the background to keep your information and data safe. Now let's talk about the user interface. The user interface is what you visually see on your screen. It is the means by which you the user interacts with your Mac. Many of you may already be familiar with Mac products and perhaps are just upgrading to the new OS X line. But for others this may be the very first time you're using a Mac. When switching from other operating systems across to OS X, it might get frustrating simply because things work differently to what you are used to. But in a short time you will see that OS X has been designed to be very user friendly and intuitive. The first thing you will notice is the dock at the bottom of the screen with links to most of the common apps you might run. This is where you will place your most used apps for quick access. The other thing you will notice is the menu bar at the top of the screen. This serves for a variety of purposes. On the left you will see an Apple icon which is always visible. The main reason you will use this icon is to sleep, restart or shut down your Mac. Then the rest of the items in the left hand side of the menu bar will change depending on the application you have selected. This is very important that you understand. They will change depending on the application you have selected. If I open the App Store you'll see that the title changes to App Store and the options change for the new application that I have selected. But if I open Address Book, the title changes to Address Book and then the options change for the Address Book. This is one of the first problems people encounter when getting used to the OS X interface. We have the application window and people try to look in the window for menu options but instead they will always be found in the menu bar. Again, it is very intuitive once you get used to it. So I'm just going to quit these apps quick. Then on the right side of the menu bar, we have icons representing a variety of applications running on the Mac. These icons give us permanent on-screen access to a variety of applications. This depends on the application and whether or not it has been designed to show up in the menu bar. Only applications that have need to be available in the menu bar have the option to have an icon show up here. The main thing I want you to see here is that on the left side of the menu bar, aside from the Apple icon, all the options are relevant to the application you currently have selected. On the right side, the icons are independent to the application you currently have selected. These icons give you direct access to the application that the icon represents. Finder is the default file manager for Mac OS X. It is how you manage your files into folders and how you browse your system to find your files. Click on Finder in the dock. In the Finder window that opens up, you will see a column on the left with two categories, Favorites and Devices. What you need to know about the Favorites column is that all the different icons you see here are just links to folders on your Mac. You can also add any folders you may use often to this menu and remove any that you don't simply by clicking and dragging. There are some default folders created for you such as applications, documents, movies, music, etc. iTunes by default adds your iTunes library to the music folder. Documents is the recommended folder to store any documents you use. The devices category shows you any devices you have connected to your Mac, external hard drives, CDs, DVDs, etc. We have a separate tutorial available on our website covering Finder in detail and all the different options you have available. For now it is just important that you understand how to navigate your computer to find your files. Applications on a Mac work differently to how many of you may be used to with other operating systems. Most applications on Mac run as self-contained packages. This provides a variety of benefits. Firstly, Applications don't typically share common program files. They have all files needed within themselves and they run in their own environment. 
It also means that files are not stored all over the place on your Mac because they are all contained within this one package. What this also means is that when you want to install or uninstall an application, it's as simple as dragging the file to your applications folder or deleting the file from your applications folder. I've prepared a common example for you. I have downloaded Skype for Mac, which is currently in my downloads folder. Most Mac apps downloaded off the internet come in a standard Apple disk image format or DMG. When you double click the image, it will mount the file on your Mac. You will see the Skype application and a shortcut to the applications folder. Not all DMG files come with the application shortcut included, but it is safe to drag the application directly to the applications folder in the finder window. So I will simply drag the Skype app to my applications folder and wait for it to finish copying. Now I'm done with the DMG file so I can eject it from the finder by clicking the eject icon. The DMG file is now no longer needed to run the application. To run the application, you can simply double click it in the applications folder. You will get a warning box, which is simply a security feature of Mac OS X. You can just click open and then the application will open. So I'm gonna quit the application and there's a quicker way to run applications, and that is now with the dock. And to add applications to the dock, it's as simple as dragging, clicking and dragging the application to the dock and letting go. It will then create an icon for you in the dock that you can access by just clicking on it. And it will bounce, and then the application will run. And to remove an application from the dock, it's as simple as just dragging it off the dock. And you'll see this little smoke icon that appears and when you let go it will remove the application from the dock and you can also rearrange your icons by just clicking and dragging them around the dock. One more thing that might be slightly different for some of you is how to quit applications in Mac OS X. If I open Skype again you will see that there is no close icon in the window. There's no X as you might be expecting that you can click to close the application. You'll see that there's a blue dot in the dock indicating that Skype is currently running whereas with many of my other applications there are no blue dots meaning that they are not running. So now I want to quit Skype. How do I do that? Well again all the options for the application are up in the menu bar on the left. The application that I have selected and to quit the application, I simply need to come up and select the application name in the menu bar. And then the last option in that menu gives me the option to quit the application. The shortcut for that, the keyboard shortcut, is Command Q, which you may want to memorize because you will be opening and closing applications all the time. So if I click Quit Skype, you'll see that it disappears from the dock. If I add it back to the dock, and I quit Skype, you will see that the blue dot disappears from underneath the icon.